mouths and lips. We're gonna talk about how to do that today. So um, a couple of things to start with. When you're starting your mouths and lips, you're gonna wanna start first by lightly drawing a line. That line is going to be the line that's going to separate your lips, okay? And it's not gonna end up being completely straight, but you wanna start off with a straight line that goes across. Then the very first thing you're gonna do is you're going to draw the little curve that's in the middle of the lips right there. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is on that same line, uh, decide where your mouth is gonna end. Now some people have really wide mouths and some people have little teeny tiny mouths. So you wanna think about that. And you're gonna make some tick marks. You can either make them tick up or tick down. Um, some people's lips tend to, tend to curve up and some tend to curve down. Um, when you look at people's mouths, um, the corners tend to do different things. I'm gonna curve mine up. You kinda wanna make sure that they are pretty close in width. So I'm noticing that one is a little further. There we go. That's good. Now, the next thing that you're going to want to do is draw the Cupid's bow. So if you don't know what that is, that's that little um, curvy part on your top lip. Okay, your Cupid's bow. And you can decide how thick you want your lips to be by how far away you put it. If you put it really close, then you're going to have very thin lips. Um, really far away, then really full lips. I'm gonna just put mine kind of right there. You don't want it to be bigger than this original curve, and it can be more pointy if you want it to be. Um, I'm just gonna make the curve mirror that curve. Depends upon the lips that you're looking at. Um, some people have a really a defined Cupid's bow, some people really don't. Um, and so when you're doing observational drawing, you'll, you'll look at the lips and, and make that decision based on those. So then, once you get that part done, then the next thing that you're going to do is you are going to connect the corner to the original curve, corner to the original curve. And you kind of want them to mirror each other and it's not gonna be a straight line. Usually it'll come down and then come up a little bit to connect. And you kind of want to use this original horizon line that you drew to be kind of a guide so that you're saying, okay, that's about the same distance. It's about the same in order to get your lips to be pretty um, even, okay? And that curve again, when you're looking at an observational picture will be more defined on some people and less defined on others. Now we're going to connect the top um, Cupid's bow down to the corner. And of course this shape again is mirrored on the other side and will depend on um, the shape of the lips. Some of them are pushed out, some of them come in more, it just depends. Then you get to also decide how thick the bottom lip is. Typically when you're looking at lips, your bottom lip is thicker than your top lip. So you, you wanna make sure that you at least make the bottom a little bit thicker. This is in most people. Now you will find certain people that when you look at them, their bottom lip is much thinner. Um, that doesn't happen very often, but in observation or drawing, you wanna draw what you see. So I'm gonna start it there and then I'm going to lightly connect up to the corners. Now I can erase out all of my horizon line. So now that I've done some cleanup, we can talk a little bit about shading. So um, some of the pictures that you're gonna be using are shaded a little differently, but usually when you're talking to someone or taking a picture of someone, the light is coming from above, which means different parts of the lips are going to be shaded differently. Your bottom lip is going to actually be lighter than the top. Is it really lighter? No, it's because your top lip is angled down as and is in fact in shadow. Okay, so I'm gonna start by redefining my lips and then adding a little bit of shadow. Now, you might wanna just go ahead and lightly color the whole lip in, very lightly, because everybody's lip is uh, differently colored, a little darker than your typical skin tone. 
no matter what your skin tone is, it's because your lips are made up of a different type of skin. Your lips don't sweat, just like the skin in your mouth does not sweat either. That is because it's made of a different kind of skin that then doesn't have any pores and is capable of being wet all the time. Think about how inside of your mouth is wet all the time. Okay, so I am going to be adding my shading on here. And this part of the lip is actually gonna be darker on the top lip. Why? Because that's the part that is the most in shadow. The very upper part might actually have a highlight on it because that would be the part that's, that the light would be hitting. Redefine this part. If I feel like I need to come in and do some highlights on the very top, I can do that. Now, as far as the bottom lip goes, the very edge and right in here are gonna be your darkest points because this top lip is casting a little shadow on there. And down here is gonna be darker too. And I could fill it in with that very light lip color from the top and then come back in. This, of course, is gonna fade out. Down here is the same thing. It's gonna fade up. If I notice that my dark darks are disappearing and my top lip needs to be a couple shades darker right through here. Come in and make the separation even darker. Now, you will almost always see a little shadow under the lip, okay? It's because your top lip is casting a shadow onto your chin. Now, oftentimes, um, people forget this part, but the very edge of your lip has a little highlight there that is actually a, a reflected light from your chin. So that's how you can see that there is a separation in here. Of course, Cupid bows most of the time have some shading, very light in them. Some people, their Cupid's bows are not pronounced at all and there's no shading in there. Now, if you're advanced and you would like to draw all of the uh, little um, indentions in your lips, they are gonna be very similar to eyelashes in the sense that they all just don't go up. In the middle, they're gonna go more to the front, more straight up and down. Then as you go to the right, they are going to tend to go a little bit to the right and bend that direction. And as you go to the left, they're gonna bend a little bit that direction. So if you notice, I am on the right side of the middle. So I am going to make mine go that way. And as we come in the middle, I am going to make mine go to the left as I head over that direction. Same thing for the bottom. Now this of course is an option. It's a little bit more advanced. It's not something that you have to do. Something that you might want to be thinking about though is um, the highlight that's on the bottom of your lip. Oftentimes there is a little highlight down here from the light that is catching on the bottom of your lip and I'm just using my eraser to erase it out. Kind of like I did on the very top up here, just erasing out the little highlight that's on the bottom of my lip, okay? So we have here this finished off lip um, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how to do um, lips with teeth. Much, much harder. I'm going to caution against it. Unless you can do this, I would not do lips with teeth. Teeth are much more difficult to draw and to get correctly. So um, in doing lips with teeth, um, you'll need to be probably looking at a source in order to get your teeth correct. So again, 
you have that horizon line that you're going to be using as a base. That's where the corners of your mouth are gonna go. When you have lips with teeth, you typically have your lips cor um, curving up above that line and then down below that line. Before we even think about teeth, we need to get the shape of the lips in. You need to start out the very same way with your curve that goes up just like that, okay? Corners of your mouth, okay? Then you're gonna have your little, I'm gonna make this a much thinner lip. Right there. Of course, going from the edge to the edge, so it's much the same just to get that shape, okay? Sometimes when you're smiling, this part is stretched out a little bit and is not quite as pronounced as it was if your lips are closed. So then we're going to connect Cupid's bow to corners. Okay, now for the bottom. Decide how wide you would like it to be. It should still be wider than the top. So, teeth. Teeth are quite difficult to do. So on this one, the middle, and I'm just making some up. If you do teeth, I would like you to do some observation. Your teeth are shaped like this. Now the problem is everybody tries to fit the whole tooth in there, when really when you smile sometimes it gets covered up. And you wanna make sure that your teeth are about the same size and shape they end up looking weird. Sometimes when you're observing people, their gum line will look completely different. Sometimes you'll see it. Sometimes people smile and you see their entire gum line. Sometimes you smile and you, you don't see their gum line at all. Just depends how their mouths are shaped. As you go further back, your teeth are going to get smaller. Until you might not even barely see them at all. I'm deciding I think I want my lip to come down a little bit over my teeth, just like that. Now, shading is gonna be very similar from the, for the lip. So I'm gonna start by shading my top lip, remembering that it is going to be darker than my bottom lip. Let's do the bottom lip now. Now something that will probably happen when you're drawing teeth is you might have like at the tiniest little bit of a reflection right along the edge. Now, teeth. You wanna be very careful about the color that you color the gums. You don't wanna make it too dark or it's going to look like gingivitis. Really not color, we're talking about shade here. So you wanna be very careful the shade that you start with your gums. You wanna st stick to pretty light. Teeth, you're not gonna outline them too dark. However, you are going to make them more distinct. Now, your teeth are not always completely white. There will be some shading on your teeth. So I have a big highlight. I'm gonna put my light, since my highlight's right here, let's go ahead and make these teeth just a little bit in shadow to show that they are in fact round. So I am doing the absolute lightest touching that I can on the teeth. There's probably gonna be a little shadow from the, um, the lip up there. Now, 
the further back your teeth go in the mouth, the more in shadow they're going to become. Until you get all the way back there and it's completely dark and you can't even see. There's teeth back there, but you just can't even really see. And the area around the teeth is going to be very dark. Same thing over here, we're gonna do a little shading. The further back we go, the more shading we will see. It's almost like doing a grayscale on the mouth. And pressing really hard in the back, almost fading that in. Just like that, and now you have teeth. I'm gonna go back and absolutely make sure that you really like your, um, your lip lines, that you can see where they separate from the teeth. And don't forget, you will be needing to do your under the lip. You still have a little shadow that's under your lip. And your reflected shadow, which you can erase back in more of if you would like. And there we have some teeth. Much, much more difficult to do. So I would suggest this for advanced students or if you master this pretty quickly, going in there and trying to do teeth.